Today we're seeing what a venomous snake bite does to a real human hand. And the results just might shock you. This summer, I put these bite-proof gloves through different tests against venomous snakes. Once against the Copperhead, and once against Latin America's most deadly, the Ferda Lance. These gloves were advertised as snake bite-proof, but upon further examination, we found that not to be entirely truthful. If this small little Copperhead snake can bite through these gloves, the chances of any other venomous snake doing so are pretty high. However, everybody wants to know what a venomous snake bite looks like in real life. So, I thought this was a golden opportunity to show you. Okay, we have a small little fair to lance right here, blended in perfectly. They are very, very spastic snakes. Stay right where you're at. You can kind of crouch down on one knee because you're safe where you're at, Selena. Oh, look at that. That, my friends, ladies and gentlemen, is the most dangerous snake in all of Latin America. This snake right here is called the Ferda Lance, and it is responsible for 90% of all venomous snake deaths in Central and South America. You see the snake feels comfortable there. It's not wiggling the tail, it's not sticking its tongue out, so it's just trying to remain camouflaged right now. So I think this is as good of time as any to get this bite test underway. With everything in place, it was time to let the snake go full force into the hand and glove. There we go, got a strike right there. Look at the power in this strike. Mouth gaped wide open with its hypodermic needle-like fangs digging straight into the hand. When I replay this in real time, you can see just how quick it is. If you find yourself in a pit viper's strike range and it decided to bite, yeah, there's not much you can do. The Ferda Lance is packed with a mostly hemotoxic venom that destroys red blood cells and tissue. This is the deadliest snake in all of Latin America, so it's safe to say I was very cautious around this snake. Now before we examine the hand, let's take a look at the copperhead bite. This is yet another pit viper species, and you can see the similarities in their striking methods. Very quick with its mouth gaped wide open displaying those fangs. The copperhead snake is responsible for the most bites ever Every year in the United States due to how common they are and how well they can camouflage. However, they're not the largest of snakes which means their venom yield is relatively low, so bites are rarely ever fatal from this species. Still, its hemotoxic venom will leave you in the hospital for a long time and perhaps even missing an extremity. Now that we've seen what a snake bite looks like from a third person perspective, let's take a look at the hand to see what damage a venomous snake can do. Okay, so this obviously is the hand right here that has been through two different venomous snake bites. And you can see it actually looks pretty well at first glance here. Now, if you're wondering where I got this hand, this is actually the same hand that tattoo artists will practice on when they're going through school because, like I said earlier, it has the same exact density and consistency as a real human hand. And when I really get up close, you can see it is obviously a little bit dirty, but when I get up close, you can see it has texture so incredibly similar to a real human hand. Now it is lacking bones, but with a snake bite, you're not really gonna have any bone damage, so that isn't necessary in this experiment. So the first bite that we showed in this episode, the Ferda Lance bite, happened somewhere here along the top knuckles here on the hand. And you can see at first glance, yeah, there is practically no visible damage done here. And that's because I believe the gloves actually stop the fangs of the Ferda Lance from piercing this hand, which is incredibly surprising because the Copperhead was able to get through. But if I flip the hand over just like this, you can probably already see that little hole right there, maybe the one next to it. This is from the Copperhead bite. I know this is from the Copperhead bite because, well, that is the first one that I ever did. And I know for a fact that that snake was able to get through the gloves. But I'm gonna get this hand a little closer are just like that and you can see when I move it the other fang mark becomes a lot more visible and you can see this wasn't an incredibly clean bite now this fang going in here was definitely very very clean I mean look how just perfect of a strike that is from the fang of that copperhead now if you go to the other one I have to you can't you barely can't even see it if I don't move the thumb but if you go to the other one you can see this fang 
it doesn't look like went in quite as cleanly because well it's almost like more of a rip than a puncture mark so i'm assuming the snake went fang in here fang in here rip and then rip out as the hand was moving. And so very few people out there actually know what a venomous snake bite looks like on the human body. And here, we are getting a perfect example of that. So now that we have this look of the envenomation from a copperhead snake on practically a real human hand, let's go over what would happen if this was your hand. Your first step is to get to the hospital immediately, whether that's calling an ambulance or driving straight there. The more time you waste, the higher your chances are of losing a limb or possibly even worse. If you were able to identify the species and what kind of venom it has, like a copperhead or fair to lance, do not try to apply any tourniquet to slow the spread of the venom. Like I said, the copperhead and the fair to lance both have a hemotoxic venom, which destroys red blood cells. And if you isolate that venom even more, it's just going to cause more damage and speed up the process. I know, I know, it can get a little confusing, so if you have any questions, make sure to comment them down below. The most important thing you need to do, though, is stay calm. Do not panic and keep that heart rate down. I know it's a lot easier to say now when you have not been bit by a venomous snake, but just keep that in mind. Another huge tip is to avoid moving as much as you can. If you're two hours into a hike, do not try to make that hike back, because you probably are not going to make it and you just will make the situation worse. You'll have to accept the reality and call 911 immediately. Let me remind you though that venomous snake bites are rare, and 99% of them are a result of the person not seeing the snake beforehand. Knowing the environment that you're in, wearing protective shoes and pants, and knowing snake behavior are the keys to avoiding bites. So should I take this hand back out into the field for more bite tests? What venomous snake should I work with next? Make sure to let me know in the comment section down below, and if you haven't already, go watch the original snake bite test video. I'm Ray Tiller and I'll see you guys on the next adventure.